Colin Watkinson, you're the cinematographer on The Handmaid's Tale. And the first question I want to know about is how you became involved on the show. I got a call from Reed Morano, the director of the first three episodes. We spoke on Skype. Um, I think I was in Lisbon at the time. And we connected really well. Um, I'd read the book back in the late 80s. Loved the book. And really loved Reed's work. I'd seen uh, Frozen River, which I thought when I watched it, you know, I was like, who shot that? You know, and so we had a connection straight away. We loved each other's work. And that's where we moved on from there. I, I managed to you know, get the job with her and off we went. And here you are. Um, you know, for me, when I talk about this show, the thing that I most want to talk about is the, the look of the show. It's so distinctive. It's so different. Um, obviously, it's based on a very famous uh, novel and it's been adapted before, but I think the look of this particular show really sets it apart. Uh, and that's because of your work, the work of Anne Crabtree and others. Um, I'm wondering, for example, how important is the use of colour um, in bringing this look, the look of this show to life? I think it's really important. You know, the um, colour is a very important part in the part in the book. You know, um, with all the different characters or the female characters having their particular colours, and we decided well, we we didn't like what was done in the film. Um, we didn't like the colours. We uh, so we had a very particular sort of palettes in mind, and we talked early on how we were going to um, use red and blues together what type of red and blues we were going to use and we, you know, we that was our starting point and we we looked we looked at various you know, photographers and um, certain pictures that we liked that sort of certain hues of blues and reds and you know, we knew it had to sort of pop off the screen and would be written you know, uh, the handmaids are in virtually you know not every scene but a lot you know and then the, and the teal blues of the wives with, uh, you know, with Serena Joy, very strong colours. And then Julie Berghoff, the production designer, then married all that together with you know, gorgeous sort of, um, wall colours in the houses. And, you know, and, and Anne Crabtree was amazing what she did with the colours. So it was, Reed took a, a she would take swatches around of reds from various scouts. And, and check out, you know, how each red would react, where where, where we where we would be, until until she landed on one that she really liked. Um, and then with the photography, you know, I decided I I pitched to read that I you know I was going to do sort of mixed color temperature lighting, um, and that all blended in with the various costumes, the the, the changing colors of costumes. Um, then with the grade, we also then added, we would add colour in the blacks. And there was this continuation of use of colour throughout the whole show. Yeah. And what about doing a dystopian type of show? I, I, I would expect, and I'm not an expert, obviously, but I would expect that you'd, there'd be a temptation to go really bleak and really grey and really dark all the time. Um, you see a lot of um, films and television shows set in dystopian worlds that, that look like that this doesn't really necessarily go down that road you've got a lot of snowy backgrounds there's a lot it is very bleak it is very futuristic yeah. but you do see a lot of the colors pop off the screen was there was it a challenge to not kind of go down that normal route and try something a little different good question um i don't i think because we set off on a particular path from the get-go um we never really thought about that you know, we knew that there was always going to be colour within the show. So it was how we were going to express the colour. And bleak, no, bleak never came into it. It's almost the subject matter itself is bleak. And we kind of liked the opposite effect. A lot of the times we would do shots that, was, you know, that we thought were really beautiful. And it unsettles the viewer that they're looking at something that's really beautiful but actually isn't, yeah. you know, and, th and then we would use color in certain steps to be like with the ceremony, the first ceremony we did, the, in the book, it's in the lights are on, 
you know, it's and the opposite to what you'd usually have uh, a sex scene. And um, that's, that's what we did. So it's, again, the, the viewers kind of slightly unnerved in one way. They're looking at one thing, thinking of one way, but it's actually another. So we can, that was a theme we continued throughout the whole show. Well, speaking of the ceremonies, they're actually really quite difficult to watch because they're really, to me, they felt really claustrophobic. We're really, really in there and yes. uh, without them being gratuitous. So, and I immediately thought, well, if I was the DP on this, what would I, what shots would I have tried to choose to, to get the audience in there and feeling super uncomfortable? Yeah, no, we, um, that's exactly what we tried to do. You know, uh, no, no, it's not gratuitous, but it's, you, you are right in there. I mean, it was always meant to be from um, Offred's point of view. So we tried to make the, the, the viewer feel that what Offred was feeling, or what she was experiencing. So we would know, we would you know, unfortunately for Yvonne, we would shoot you know, up Yvonne's nose, you know, when we would shoot the, uh, you know, across Offred's body and we would shoot the ceiling, you know, and, you know, um, to try and put you right in there. And then you come out and you see this very uncomfortable scene and then you know, we'd shoot that in the Gilead way of, you know, very formal framings. Um, totally to, un completely trying to unnerve the view the viewer at all times, you know, to uh, this pretty barbaric sort of ritual. Yeah. Um, and I was also, you just kind of touched on it a second ago, but when you look at the cinematography of, you know, Offred's story or in Gilead and The Handmaids, it's, it seems intentionally very different to when we're looking at her in flashbacks. Um, can you talk yes. us through some of the differences, the intentional differences that you employed in uh, putting us in each of those worlds? Um, well, the, the flashbacks, I think what works so well about it now when you look when we look back on it, is it's meant to feel now and present. And the idea was to totally, again, unsettle the viewer that this is only a couple of years in the future. You know, Gilead, I think our timeline is, uh, I believe it was like three and a half years plus. So when you go back, you know, we, we shot the flashbacks in a sort of cinema verite, very lifestyle feeling, you know, that's, it just, you feel like you're right there. And then Gilead, to sort of to express which, I know exactly where you are with Gilead, and also the formality of Gilead, and you know, all, the, all the feelings that uh, Reed and um, Bruce wants to convey. And that's why we chose to shoot, you know, um, in this sort of you know, formal composition style, you know, Kubik-esque. Um, to separate it out. We didn't want to do any gimmicks with um, grading to, to tell the viewer that where they were. So we decided to do it this way. So you always, you pretty much know where you are in the timeline by the composition and um, camera style. Yeah. And in episode six, um, <clears throat> I would have thought that would have been one of the most challenging episodes. That's the, the banquet, the, a woman's place where particularly yes. towards the end of the episode, it's a, there's a lot of people in it. Um, it's lit in a certain way. We've got different tones. So the handmaids are obviously devastated. The delegation from Mexico are obviously elated. And you've got lots of children. Yeah. Like I, I would have thought that would have been quite a difficult shoot to um, accomplish. What can you tell us about that particular episode? I enjoyed the episode. And that came together really well because it's, I think, entirely. I don't know if there's any flashbacks in episode six, if I'm correct. Um, so it exists totally in the Gilead world. And, but very much in Offred's point of view, you know, there's a lot of, there's a lot of moments in six, you know, and we'd only go handheld when we wanted to express, you know, true, you know, real emotion, strong emotion within Offred and with her, and her what, which, what she was thinking. So, um, but then the, the, the banquet was actually a real joy to shoot. The, the, the building was phenomenal. Um, I didn't have to do an awful lot, to be honest. It was pretty much, you know, that's how it is. You know, once we put the colours in and we do our formal framings, um, it was pretty easy. It was pretty, yeah, and, you know, it was just about capturing, once we got the right bit, so who's, that's what's happening there. That's, you know, it's the, the handmaids are seeing their children, their children 
coming in. So you've got to get those expressions, you know, and we'd, it was, we, we had repetitive themes, you know, when uh, in the episode one at the salvaging, before the women go in to, um, you know, to kill the guy who's, you know, um, in the middle, we, we, we knew we'd do these shots to give the view exactly what these women are feeling. And we did the same in episode six at those tables. So when these girls are running, the children are running around, we would do these shots around the handmaids as well. So you can truly feel what they're, you know, what's going on inside their heads. Cause they know they're not allowed to say anything. They're not allowed to fight back. You know, yes, and, uh, exactly right. Worked, I thought it worked really well. Yeah. The other episode that um, comes to mind is the finale, which I think is airing today in the States. Um, and by the time this interview airs, it will have aired for everyone. There is a number of really iconic shots in the finale. There's when Offred's trapped in the car, and Serena's sitting with her daughter, and um, there's in the yes. commander's den, the sequence when the handmaids are being told to stone Madeline Brewer's character to death, yes. in the wagon yes. when she's being escorted. There's heaps of them. And there's like when the handmaids walk walk around it with that um, with that song yes. pairing. Um, I'm just wondering if you could talk us through the highlights of filming the finale. It just looked like you, you and your team just really threw everything at us, and it really seemed to work quite effectively. Yeah, episode 10, when it turned up, when the pages turned up for 10, it was like, oh, Bruce has really, uh, he's really gone to town on this one, you know. And we decided that uh, we would repeat themes that throughout the season, you know, certain shots, certain styles to sort of round the whole season up, you know, because the story was already there. You know, we knew you know, by reading it, we went, oh, this is great. This is really good. And Carrie Scoglin, the director, she had a total handle on how to do this. You know, she's a, a real expert in, in you know, great filmmaking, real powerful filmmaking. So I knew straight away that, you know, that we were, we were good, in good hands there. And it was a lot of fun to shoot. I mean, the, 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 the stoning scene was, was tricky. You know, you know, typical, we started there and we'd gone for a very cold look of the day with snow. And of course, the song came out in the middle of the day. So that was uh, it was difficult, you know, because we you, know, you have one day to do that entire scene. And the end sequence, we came up with that. You know, it was funny. You know, with Lizzie came up with that. With um, even Jonah, our second AC, had an input in that. How we'd like to connect the entire house from Offred's bedroom down to into the van. And of course, the the, the bedroom is a set. And then you come down and through the out of the bedroom, down the stairs, into the real house, down the stairs in the real house, and outside into the van. So it was a technical challenge for how to do that, you know, because the, the steady cam can't get into the van at the end. So we had to do a sort of you know a little trick there, a little camera trick to get us in there, to then get us into the final shot. Which you know, um, I'm really interested to see how the uh, uh, viewers find that. What do they think of that? Yeah, it's kind of been sitting in my head for the last few days, and I'm. You liked it? Yeah, I did. It it was it was so unnerving. though. like the whole bloody show. It was just very very unnerving <laughs> to watch. It's a good episode, eh? <laughs> really good episode. Really really good one. It was a highlight for me. That's great. That's did you have great. any other highlights from the series? I mean, I would have expected the pilot would have been a good one because you've it's when you're setting up a lot of what you're doing. But is there anything in particular when you look back and think, yeah, I was really really proud of that particular shot? Um, I, I think my uh, my favourite shot, you know, and this happens occasionally, is um, when when accidents happen, and it makes the shot ten times better. Was that it was episode four or five? I think it's four. I can't remember which one exactly. But our friend's coming out. She's going to the doctors, mm. and it's raining outside, and she hasn't been out. It's four. And she hasn't been outside for a while. And she opens the door, you know, she looks up at the rain and looks up, you know, out, you know, for the first time she's been allowed outside for 19 days or whatever it is. And the camera goes up into the sky. It's all, it's all, it's, we shot it at, I think it was 50 frames, 100 frames a second. And we tilt down. And as they tilted down, the water had got into the steady cam the guy's monitor. So he's now, he's now operating blind. And the, the, the framing I came down to on the umbrella with the water bouncing off the umbrella, 
it was just perfect. I mean, you know, it's like you wonder, he probably would have got a great shot, but the fact that he just went with it and the framing turned out to be absolutely perfect was, you know, it's one of my favorite shots the entire yeah. season. I remember that one. That, that, yeah, that's a bloody good one. Um, yeah. You know, a lot has been said about how timely The Handmaid's Tale has become. It was timely even when Margaret Atwood wrote the novel years ago because obviously uh, women's rights and, and issues surrounding, surrounding that have always been prevalent. But I'm wondering what people want to talk to you about. Do they, when you're talking about the show and your work on the show, do they always want to go to how timely the show has become? People always mention how timely it is. Um... We got lucky that with you know with the elections happening right in the you know, in the middle of shooting, um, but the you know the, you know, the, the subject of the, of of the of the show has been with us for thirty years and unfortunately is still with us. Um, as long as those messages are getting out, that's that's all I care about. Yeah, exactly. I was, I always wonder when I'm speaking to um people behind the camera, what what influences you as a cinematographer? What what do you look back on when you've been developing as a DP and think, yeah, the work of that particular person or that particular style has influenced my work? You mean what other DPs or what yeah, other directors? Yeah, DPs, directors and other creatives. Yeah, it's it's always it's, it's, it's always how they tell the story, how, how, it, how, it, how it grabs you. How can something grab you? You know, it, it can be beautiful, but does it tell a story? And that's important. I always look, and the, and the, you can. I try and look across many genres to try and you know take as much as I can, and learn as much as I can completely about how to tell a story and, and tell it better and to, um, engage the viewer. Yeah. Well. And of course, look you know, and and look great. You know, I, I, you know, I do like good looking stuff. Yeah. I think many of us who aren't experts um, in in what the you know the art of cinematography is usually think, oh, what's the What's the, most, what's the prettiest and what's the most um, gorgeous thing that we're looking at? Do you find that that is generally what uh, lay people uh, expect from cinematography? I don't think so. Um, I think you know, people like beautiful images, um, but I don't think it's important. I think you know, it's, it's the story becomes so important, what they're looking at, what they're, what they're, what they're engaging with is what becomes important you know you can you can be if it's, it can be beautiful but vacuous you know and, and, it, just, and it can make you switch off There's, it, it might hold your attention for a little bit longer but to actually sort of engage it's you know, it has to take it has to take you in there yeah absolutely colin good luck with the emmys this season we hope to see handmaid's tale all over the ballot and uh, hopefully you'll be there as well thank you very much